Good evening. I was, uh, I went into town yesterday. I went into Santa Fe and to the Collected Works bookstore because there was a book signing. Mr. Forrest Fenn was there. He launched his latest book, which is titled Too Far to Walk, about three weeks ago. But he had a discussion uh, meeting at Collected Works bookstore last night, October 23, 2013. And with him, just as in two years ago, in November 2011, uh, the writer Douglas Preston was there, and the Mike, uh, writer Michael McGarrity was also there. Um, I enjoy the... I've read two books that he has written, and I've enjoyed them both. People who like the American Southwest um, will probably like his books. Um, they were there, and they had a discussion about Mr. Fenn's latest book. Um, Mr. Fenn is um, very sharp and witty. Uh, he called me the Mountain Man. Uh, I was in the back audience there, and um, I had a question about one of the statements you said. And he pointed at me and said, yeah, the, the Mountain Man over there. Of course, I turned around and looked to see who he was pointing at. Apparently, it was me. Anyhow... It was an awesome uh, meeting. I feel sorry for people who are interested in finding Forrest Fenn's hidden treasure who was not, who were not there because they missed a very fun event. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. McGarrity asked how many people um, in the audience out of 140, how many have gone to look for the hidden treasure? And about 60-70% of the people raised their hands, which is a lot of people. And Doug, Mr. Preston asked um, how many who have not gone looking plan on doing so. And about another 20 people, 15 or 20 people more raised their hands. So there's a hell of a lot of interest in people going out looking for the hidden uh, treasure chest that Mr. Fenn has hidden somewhere north in the mountains north of Santa Fe, New Mexico, not Australia. It was an awesome fun evening. Before I arrived I went and bought groceries and at the grocery store while I was waiting in line to, to get my groceries uh, paid for, the woman in front of me turned around, looked at me, and she asked me if I knew anybody she could hire to beat up somebody. I immediately said, I'll do it. Um, you know, if you pay me a decent amount of money, I would do it. But I told her, I don't know what a fair rate is. You know, how much do I charge uh, somebody for beating up a third person? I have no idea what the going rate is. And I told her I would not want to overcharge her, and I would not want to undercharge my time. I told her that maybe I could find somebody for her that would do it for $20, you know, because there's a hell of a lot of people that would beat up somebody just for $20 or less. And she said, that's too much money. $20, I think, is a pretty damn good deal for hiring somebody to beat up another person. Um, I would not personally do it for $20. I think my time is worth more than that. And then when I got to the, uh, the book signing and the discussion at Collected Works Bookstore, out of 140 people, this really cute woman, I guess she's 55 or so, um... She stepped into the crowd, and you could, I noticed that she was scanning the crowd, and her eyes locked on mine. And she came over, and she just kept walking until her forehead was almost right up against mine. She stared into my eyes, and she said, We're kindred spirits. And I believe it, because she sat down next to me, and she started saying some really... Um, to be polite, batshit crazy things, uh, just bizarre things about her life and how she went crazy in the military and she's just, you know, she, she said that she's just nuts and she's just 
never gotten over, for example, her evil mother-in-law kicking her out of her own house when she married her dad, uh, you know, 40 years ago. And I suggested, well, you know, it's never too late to take vengeance upon her, to visit, to wreak vengeance on her evil uh, stepmother. And she said, well, yes, it is too late because she's dead. You know, I, I pointed out to her, that doesn't matter. You, if you know where she's buried, perhaps, you can dig her up. You can take wreak vengeance upon her very bones. You could, like, find a, a junkyard dog to give her skull to, you know, as a plaything or some of a chew toy. Uh, she could defecate on the grave. She could piss on it. She could do all sorts of terrible, horrible things to, like, the headstone, whatever. You know, it's, I told her it's never too late. Uh, you know, go for it. Um, she would feel better um, afterwards. It would be a completion in her life. And she sat there after I had finished giving the advice, and I could see her mind, the gears in her mind are just cranking away, you know, just thinking about that, just pondering. Um, I could actually see the brain just, just grinding out, you know, you know, considering the advice. And eventually she turned to look at me, grinned, and said, You're funny! So, yes, kindred spirits. I thought she was just amazing. I'd, I'd love to have this woman in my life, you know, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It is not often that people ask me when I go into town about hiring perhaps myself or if I know somebody, uh, hiring somebody that will beat up, you know, just for a fee, somebody else. It doesn't really happen all the time. So I thought that was pretty cool, and if she had paid me enough, I might have considered it, but you'd probably pay a hell of a lot more for the worst beating. If you just wanted a slight beating, you'd pay a whole lot less. Reasonable.